Command Expert is a Keysight Technologies programming solution which allows users to quickly and easily program their test and measurement instruments. In order to get to the product page for Command Expert, you can simply type in www.keysight.com forward slash find forward slash command expert in all one word. This will bring you to the product page for Command Expert from which you can download the tool, learn about the new features, and check which instruments are compatible with the software. Once Command Expert is downloaded and installed, this is the window that you will see upon launching the software. In this example, we're going to connect over to an N5182 Bravo vector signal generator. We're going to send a sequence of commands to set a frequency and an amplitude. We'll then wait for three seconds, send a new frequency and an amplitude, and then wait for three seconds again. We'll then show how to run the entire sequence all the way through. So in order to start, we first need a new instrument. So we click our new instrument button. We're going to tell the software we'd like to connect to a real instrument. We'll click Next. We're going to click down here and tell it that we want to manually enter an instrument address. And from here, you can give it either an IP address or a host name. Either one will work. In our case, we're going to give it a host name. We then tell it Next. It's going to go searching for the command sets for that instrument. Since this is a signal generator, it gave us three options. You can use IVIC, IVICOM, or Skippy commands. In our example, we're going to be using Skippy commands. So we'll tell it Next. You can name it anything you'd like to name it. Tell it Next again. And now we want to add it to My Instruments. That causes the software to put it here in a list of your instruments. Now, as you can see, it's highlighted. We're going to tell the software to connect. And what it does is it brings up now the command list for that instrument. It also puts a command down here. This is part of our program that we're starting in order to open a session with the instrument. Now, in our case, what we're going to do is first go ahead and set the frequency. We're just going to use a CW wave, so we'll just set a fixed frequency. We'll go ahead here on the right. It brings up the command, asks you to enter a value. Now over here, the default is Hertz. It doesn't give us an option for meg or gig, so we'll have to type in, if we want to set it to 1 gigahertz, we'll have to type in the entire number in Hertz. We can go ahead and tell it to perform that. And again, it'll add it to our program now. If you'd like to see that it's really set to 1 gigahertz, we can come over and query it. And it'll put the result here on the right showing us that it really was set to 1 gigahertz. Now, we're going to give it some power so we can see that the signal is really being output. So we'll come into our power menu. Come into the level. We want it immediate. And we want to set the amplitude. So let's start out with a minus 20. And here again, this time we can choose with minus 20 dBm. Go ahead and perform that. It adds it to our program. Click on the Query button here. We can verify. And now we should be able to see a 1 gigahertz signal at 20, at minus 20 dBm. There we go. Upon refreshing, we can see that the signal generator is set. And now we can even look at it on a spectrum analyzer. If we set our center frequency to 1 gigahertz, 
we can see our signal here at 1 gigahertz. Now let's go ahead. Let's tell it to wait. We click in the space here, right mouse click, tell it to insert a wait statement. The default is one second. We're going to set ours for three seconds. So the default is in milliseconds, and we don't need to perform a wait. <laughs> we can just go ahead and update step six, and then down in our program, it'll set the wait to three seconds. Now what we want to do is set another frequency. So we come back to our frequency command. This time we're going to set it, let's say, to two gigahertz. Go ahead and perform this. We'll go ahead and query to make sure. And here we see two gigahertz. Now let's change the amplitude as well. We can come into the amplitude. This time let's set the amplitude to minus 10 dBm. We'll go ahead and perform that. We'll go ahead and query to make sure. And now let's check. Let's refresh our... Here we see that it's set to 2 gigahertz, minus 10 dBm. Now when we bring up our spectrum analyzer, we can see, let's set our center frequency now to 2 gigahertz, and there we see our 2 gigahertz minus 10 dBm signal. Now let's set one more value. Let's go ahead, we'll put another 3 second wait in here. So we're going to insert a wait. We'll go ahead, let's change that one. Let's wait just two seconds on this one. We'll go ahead and update. We'll set one last frequency. This time we'll go ahead and do three gigahertz. Let's perform that. Let's go ahead and query to make sure it's set correctly. Now we'll come again to set one last amplitude. This time we'll do maybe minus 30 dBm. Go ahead and perform that. Again, we want to do a query. Let's check our source here. Here we go. We see it's 3 gigahertz and minus 30 dBm. Check one last time our spectrum analyzer at our center frequency to 3 gigahertz. Now we see at minus 30 dBm. And let's say that's all we want to do now in our program. So now we have all of our code written here by command expert. What we can do is go ahead. You can click on an individual step, and you can go ahead and play the selected step, or you can play the entire sequence the command expert will show you as it's going through the sequence. Now it's done, and in a future video, I'll show how you can save this program and import it into another language. If you're not planning to import the sequence into another programming language, and you simply would like to save the sequence in order to bring it up at a later time, you can do that very easily by clicking on File, Save Sequence As, go ahead and give it, in this case we'll call it a Frequency Amplitude Changes. You can give it any name you'd like. Go ahead and save it. And now when you're ready to import it at a later day, you simply launch the application. You say File, Open Sequence, go ahead and double click on the sequence you'd like to import and there you can run your sequence from there.